Today I'd like to show you this demonstration here, which um, tells a little bit about something that happens in atomic nuclei, and nuclei that are deformed and can rotate. And what can happen as the nucleus rotates, and the nucleus rotating is uh, simulated here with this table turning around. And then the individual protons and neutrons can respond to that rotation with the Coriolis force. And what can happen is that the nucleons, protons or neutrons, which originally uh, are paired such that one has its angular momenta in one direction, another in the opposite direction, hence the two flags. Here the angular momentum for this nucleon is pointing downwards, this one is pointing up, and these um, particles respond to the rotation of the nucleus as a whole, and what can happen is that the Coriolis force, at a particular uh, rotational frequency, can overcome what is called the pairing force between the nucleons, which is simulated in this model with these extremely strong rare earth magnets here. So what you will see is that um, we will spin the gyroscopes up such that they have high J, high angular momentum. We will rotate the platform and you will see initially that uh, the nucleons stay paired, but a certain point will occur where the Coriolis force is sufficient to break the pairing force between the nucleons, and the two nucleons align, the two flags point upwards, and now you have the backbending effect in nuclei. curious about the flags. This, these are the Danish national flag and the wording on there is happy birthday to Ben and happy birthday to Oa. Ben Modelson and Oa Bohr, Nobel Prize winners in nuclear structure physics. Here you can see the moment of inertia as a function of rotational frequency of the nucleus 158 erbium and you can see the dramatic change in the moment of inertia as the rotational frequency increases and that dramatic change in the moment of inertia is, is called the backbending. Um, the other pictures that you can see there are a gamma ray spectrum to, to the right which indicates that the I times I plus one quantum rotor behavior of the nucleus and the emission spectrum that we see there is broken at a critical point, at the backbending point. Here is the figure taken from the famous paper by Stevens and Simon, which explained backbending for the first time in terms of Coriolis alignment. And these diagrams here form the basis of the backbender model.
to compress air being pumped through the system in order to spin the gyroscopes up to very high angular momentum so that they can be, simulate a high J particle in the nucleus. And now we'll begin to rotate the nucleus. You can see that the two flags still point up and down such that the particles are still paired. The rotation, the Coriolis force is not enough yet to break the pair of particles apart. But as we increase the angular momentum of the nucleus or the rotational frequency, there will come a point where the Coriolis force overcomes the pairing force between the nucleons that point there, and now we have unpaired a pair of high J particles, a specific pair of particles in the nucleus, and the experimental signature for this is a dramatic change in the moment of inertia of the nucleus as witnessed by the gamma ray emission spectrum. Now we will slow the nucleus down, and you will see as it approaches its ground state and zero rotation, the particles pair up once again in the lowest energy state.